stretching on the machine is done using the inside edge of the presser foot as a guide. Hello humans, I am Ophidian, the master of snake style and maker of masks at Closet Champion. And this video, this video here today that you are watching is something that's been requested from us since day one. And that is how to construct kick pads. Now the way that we construct kick pads in this video is the way that we do it at Closet Champion. There are tons of different ways to construct and design kick pads. This is just the way that this specific set of kick pads needed to be made. The kick pads we're showing you today are for independent professional wrestler Sean Phoenix. He needed this pair of kick pads to match his fiery personality. Next, making his way to the ring, weighing in at 164 pounds, unbreakable, Sean Phoenix! So, Grab your silicone spray and your scissors. It's time to put some kick pads on your shin parts. Nailed it. In this video, I will be using patterns, scissors, straight pins, spray adhesive, one and a half inch woven elastic, dry type silicone spray, a permanent marker, chalk, one inch woven elastic, half inch thick foam, four way stretch spandex, PVC vinyl and chrome leatherette in assorted colors, an ancient scroll, a heat gun, and the industrial straight stitch machine we got specifically to deal with this extremely difficult combination of materials, as well as a Teflon and zipper foot attachments for said machine, and a black candle. We start by saying a prayer to a dark god whose name cannot fall upon mortal ears without melting their frontal cortex. If completed successfully, Kate becomes possessed by arcane spirits and she blacks out for several hours. When she awakens, the pattern is complete. And we can move on to cutting out our materials. There are several styles of kick pads that can be made. Today, we'll be focusing on a fully fabric design where the foam padding is sandwiched between what we call the fashion layer and the lining. Our fashion layer is a patchwork of different colors of PVC vinyl, sometimes called PVC latex or stretch pleather. To get the pattern pieces I am using for each different color, I simply trace the design off of the original pattern Kate summoned. I began by tracing each piece of our design, then I cut them out with scissors. We find scissors work best when you are cutting out sweeping curved designs like this. To be certain the pieces are in their proper place, we use the summoned pattern as a guideline to lay down our applique, then stick the pieces together with spray adhesive. Once these pieces are sewn together using a zigzag stitch, they make up the outermost fashion layer of our kick pad. With the base pattern having served its purpose as a guideline for our flame patchwork, we cut out the pattern for our foam padding. I spray the pattern with a light coating of spray adhesive to keep it in place, then trace it with a permanent marker onto our foam mat. Once traced, it is also cut out with scissors. You could do this with an X-Acto knife, but Kate keeps forgetting to order the long blades that would work for this kind of project. To help the foam conform more to the leg when the kick pad is worn, we use a heat gun to warm up the foam and make it more malleable. This way, we can bend it into a curve while it cools. Once the foam has cooled, we begin assembling our kick pad. We begin that by attaching the fashion layer to the foam using spray adhesive, making sure to pull it taut and smooth as we lay the fabric down onto the padding. Once 
Once that has been secured, we use more spray adhesive to attach the fashion layer and foam to a piece of lining material. Again, being careful to smooth it out as much as we can. Some wrinkling is inevitable. It will be pulled taut once the kick pad is being worn. We glue the fashion and lining fabrics together in sections to prevent the fabric from sticking to itself as we work. Once everything is glued together, we trim away the excess lining and prepare the kick pad by spraying it with silicone. It's time to get sewing. Using an invisible zipper foot attachment for our straight stitch machine, we carefully stitch around the foam padding, stretching the fabric taut as we sew. We like to sew around the foam more than once to keep it secure for as long as possible. Once the foam is in place, we hem the bottom of the kick pad by flipping over the ankle and toe edges between 3 eighths to a half inch, pinning and stitching them on the zigzag machine. This set of kick pads was designed with knee guards, so we now take the time to create and attach the knee guards. We also sew these on with a zipper foot to get as close to the edge of the padding as possible. After we've added the knee guard, we switch back to our standard Teflon pressure foot to stitch across the padding at the ankle. These lines of stitching secure the padding as well as provide flexibility to fit smoothly across the ankle and foot. This exact task is the reason we bought an industrial sewing machine. The various home machines we started our business on could not produce the amount of pressure needed to sew across kick pad foam. Now we're in the home stretch. It's time to add some elastic to the top of the kick pads. Our elastic is about two inches shorter than the knee measurement provided to us by our client. We make it slightly smaller so the elastic provides enough tension to hold the kick pad throughout a match. Some sliding is inevitable, but this is one of the many ways we do our best to prevent that. After stretching and pinning our elastic, we sew the top edge of the kick pad with a zigzag stitch to secure it. We can then move on to sewing up the back seam of the kick pad. We do this by using clamps to hold the padding in place, then pinning the back seam together. We first sew the seam on the zigzag machine. Then take the pins out and run it through the serger. Once the back seam is sewn, 
We flip over the elastic at the top, pin it down and zigzag stitch it about an inch and a quarter from the folded edge, catching the elastic and the raw edge as we sew. Only one more step to go. Our final step is to attach a small piece of elastic that wraps around the foot. We pin it to either side of the toe seam and secure it using the straight or zigzag stitch machine. Once all that is done, the Dark Lord will provide and your kick pad will be complete. So that is how we constructed this commission for Sean Phoenix. These kick pads are difficult to make. We do have machines in house that make this process easier like industrial serger and straight stitch machines. But that doesn't mean that you yourself can't try this at home. We'd love to see what you make on your own with the help of this tutorial. Now I know you're gonna have a lot more questions about how to make kick pads or just costuming in general. And I can definitely help you with that over on the Closet Champion Patreon. You can join our Patreon for as little as $2 a month and gain access to our private Discord. And it is there that you'll have access to me and the owner of Closet Champion, Kate Nix. As well as other makers in the community to help answer questions and guide you in your making process. You can also find all kinds of patterns that we have for sale over at closetchampion.com slash merch. Thank you for watching and be on the lookout for more behind the scenes videos. Yeah, yes. And of course, follow us across all social media at Closet Champion and myself at Ophidian Cobra. It's time to get you asked in public. That doesn't work for this, does it? It's time to put some pads on your shins. Oh, hello there. <laughs> uh.